Welcome everyone. I hope everybody is doing great. In this installment, I'm going to show you how to tune a 24 by 14 inch bass drum, give you some tips. Uh, so some sound clips too in a, in a little bit to show you what it sounds like by itself and then with mics and with a little bit of EQ as well, just to give you an idea of what this drum sounds like. If you're new to my channel, um, I've been playing drums for almost 50 years. Quite a bit of different experience. I've played live, live shows, festivals. I've done quite a bit of session work as well. I've had 20, 22, 24, 26 inch bass drums in my arsenal over that time. Most of the time I played a 22 inch drum, but recently I've, I've gone to a 24 inch drum and I um, noticed that there's a little bit some, some the differences in the tuning of this as opposed to a 22 inch drum that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about in detail right now. So with a 22 inch drum, I found it really easy to tune. If you're familiar with the term jaw just above wrinkle, that's kind of where the 22 inch drum sounds good. If you're tuning it for like a rock setting with a hole cut out in the front bass drum and a, you know, a small little pad in the, in the bass drum to muffle it a little bit. The batter head was, you know, just maybe three quarters of a turn tight, just above wrinkle, and the front head was the same or maybe a little bit tighter. And that gave you a nice solid punch and it was super easy to tune. The 24 inch drum, however, is a little bit different animal. That doesn't quite work as well as it does on a 22 inch drum. And the reason is because it's a larger drum. So with a bass drum of this size, it's almost counterintuitive, but a larger drum, you have to tune it up, I find in my experience, a little bit tighter to get the full potential out of the drum. It has to have a certain amount of tension on the heads in order to engage the shell to give you the presence and the volume and the power that this drum is capable of. If you have it tuned just above wrinkle like you would a 22 inch bass drum, you'll get the slap and the click from the beater hitting the batter head and that's fine, but there's nothing else behind it. There's no, there's no meat, there's no body behind it. But by tuning that batter head up just a touch higher than you normally would on a 22, and the same with the front head, just tuning that up a little bit higher than you normally would, that brings out the body and the power and the presence of the drum. So this is a 24 by 14 inch bass drum and I'm gonna show you how I have this tuned, um, how it's a little bit different than how I tuned a 22 inch bass drum. And I'm also gonna add some sound clips here in just a little bit. So first let's start with the batter head. So as you can see inside the drum, all I have in there is a DW hourglass pillow just lightly touching both heads. This is a Remo Power Stroke 3 clear bass drum head. Um, the reason why I picked this, a little side note real quick, the reason why I picked this, I mean, you can use any head you want to. I've tried EMADs and Aquarian 2s and, and EMAD 2s and all kinds of, of things on that. And they all sound good, but the PS3 has the most volume. So if you're interested in volume and getting the most projection and volume out of your bass drum, I would consider using uh, something more on the lines of this because this one is the, was the loudest of the bunch and it still gave me the punch in low end. So with this drum, I have it tuned up just a little bit higher than what I normally would. Um, it's not jaw just above wrinkle tuning, it's a little bit higher than that. And the reason being is because I wanted to engage the shell, I wanted to have a, a powerful sound, so you need a certain amount of tension on it. And if, for you TuneBot guys and, and guys that wanna know the specifics, I'm just using my Drum Tune Pro tuner, and if you tap at each lug, it's real close to about 80 hertz, just within a, a cent or two. So 80 hertz, if you look at the frequency range, 80 hertz is between a D sharp and an E. So that's where this batter head is tuned to. Pretty evenly all around here. I just played it a little bit, so it might be a little bit out of whack, but that's about where it's normally at, usually around a D sharp to an E. And now let's look at the front head. So this is the front head. So it's right around an 84, 83 and a half, 84 hertz, which is a little bit above an E, almost, almost an F. So it's almost between the top head, the, the resonant head and the batter head. You're looking at just about a full step with this particular drum is tuned. Um, I might go a little bit tighter on this on the front head at times, but right around there is, is kind of this, I treat it the same way as the Tom, having the front head a little bit tighter to bring that sound 
out and give you a little bit more body and increase the sound pressure inside the drum. So here are some sound clips of the drum that I just played. Um, the first four hits are the drum in the room with no EQ or nothing, just, just everything picking the bass drum up all by itself. The second four hits are the inside bass drum microphone, which is an Audix D6. The third four hits are the outside microphone, which is a Warm Audio 47 Junior. The fourth four hits are both of the microphones combined, the inside and the outside microphone with no EQ. And then the last four hits, uh, the fifth set of four hits, is the inside and outside microphone combined with some EQ on it. So that about wraps it up for this video. The take home message with this is if you have larger bass drums, 24 inch, 26 inch drums, in my experience, I think that tuning them a little bit higher than you normally would, that's what brings out the body and the volume and the power of the drum. Tuning them too low just doesn't give you as much as what the drum is capable of. So that would be the main message of this video. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it useful have any questions or anything like that, as always, just hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching, man. See you in the next one.